Welcome to SHOT Show 2024, everybody. We are the first video of day two here at the Tom's Booth with Craig. Yep, good and to see And we you. have the Mini El Chete now. Yes. Among other things. Let's talk about it. All right, Craig, show us the first thing on the menu. Yeah. Let's, let's shake your hand. Let's shake, <laughs> let's shake hands again. Um, all right, let's start with the minis. Okay. Um, first up, the mini El Chete. So the minis came about almost as a, almost as a joke, not really a joke, mm -hmm. but um, Leo had cut some some models out of out of wood, but in smaller sizes. And this was this was a couple of years ago, probably three four years ago. And we ended up taking those wood cutouts and turned them into Christmas ornaments for our tree. <laughs> but as as he was doing this, he was like, you know what? I kind of I do actually like these. Like these might work as knives. And this year, finally, he was like, you know what? Screw it. Let's do like three or four of these and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And so that's what came about with these. They are scaled down. They're roughly roughly 60% of full size. Um, the only changes that were made other than just to scale them down was to just make enough room for uh, for an index finger, for example, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously the El Chete isn't necessarily a scalable type design. Yeah. But it just looks cool, it's fun. Um, and we're gonna kind of flush this out and see if that's something that is worth making into a normal <laughs> I like that. So, I I've held the full-size El Chete before and it, it makes you feel something. It makes you wanna go and whack some tree down or something. It, it's just such a big and chunky knife. Oh yeah. This fills me with all the same joy, but I could wear this as a neck knife. It's, <laughs> it's just awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, you know what, and, and that's, that's what a lot of the guys at the shop, it was the same kind of thing. It's like, I, you know, you look at it and you're like, that's, that's cute, you know, that's funny. And then you pick it up and you're like, I actually do, I want to, I do want to cut things with this. And so that's, that's, that's the way we're feeling about the mini so far. We're not sure if it's going to be more of like a novelty item that we send out as, as say like a limited edition with a run of El Chetes and special or, you know, something to that effect. But we'll, we'll figure that out as we go. But we want to get people's feedback and, and just see what they think. So El Chete is one, El Chapo is another. That's, uh, that's our, our cleaver. <laughs> um, this is our full on like kitchen type cleaver knife. And then the, the other one is the Frog Market Special. And that one, I think, obviously probably scaled the easiest just because that it's neutral handle. A very neutral handle. It's a very simple design. There's not a, there's, it's not like we took a chopper and shrunk it down. You took a normal knife and shrunk it down. And so it still works small. That one we could probably just make as is and it would be a really cool EDC knife. Yeah, I would get one of these. Yeah, I dig it. Look I, how I like slim that. that is. Nice oh, little yeah. flex in the blade just a little bit. Oof. Yeah. What a nice little knife. Yes. So those are the minis. Full size knives shrunk down about 60%. Yeah, um, but if you like what you see here and you don't mind something huge, get the full size one. Get for the sure. full size one. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so next up, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going with the small ones. Next up, okay. this one is called the Ivy. Ivy. And every so every year we do an employee design contest here at Tops, where we ask employees. We're talking guys that make sheets, guys that even the guy that cleans the bathrooms, whoever it is. We say, hey, we want you guys to design a knife, and we're gonna pick one winner, and we're gonna make it as a model. Mm -hmm. And so the, the challenge for last year was, do a knife that's six inches or less, we want a neck knife, go. There was no, we want this tight or for this use. It was just wide open, make us a neck knife. And we, we had it. We had everything running the gambit from just a standard utility type knife to a self-defense blade to things that would be easy to hide, um, stuff like that. This one is the one that won out overall, and uh, I'm digging it. It's, uh, I mean, very much like a utility knife, like a small box cutter, basically. Yeah. With very some, similar blade shape to that. Some thicker stock, so that you got some, some bulk behind it, but it's still a high grind that leaves that blade nice and sharp. Mm -hmm. uh, Black canvas going by the handle. Tungsten Cerakote, 1095. I love it. Yeah. It seems like, like, in terms of materials, it's right in Top's wheelhouse, but this is like a, a very small but handy knife. Somehow they got a full three finger grip and that's probably like five inches in change overall. So yeah. Yeah. super tiny, but also super usable. 
And then I, uh, you can even pinch up here, and then you have access to the tip. Very handy little knife to have around. Yeah, it, that's like I say, and the thing is, it's, it's getting harder every year where the designs that we get from employees, they get better and better every year. And so it's, it's harder to pick an overall winner because there's multiple that we were like, yeah, we can make this. <laughs> so it's, a, it's been a really cool thing that we've been doing for about five or six years now. Yeah, well, I think the real winner of that competition is us who like knives because <laughs> the hardcore knife nerds over at Tops are making stuff and you guys choose the best of the best and we get to see it. It's awesome. Ag agreed. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, switching gears, we'll go to something a little crazier. This one is called the Medusa. That is a little crazier. <laughs> and it was designed by uh, by a group of guys, um, Tier One EDC Gear. Okay. And uh, they have they have a couple of they have a couple of other knives out there. There's there's a I think they have a reverse edge one. They have something that's kind of like a fruit knife, you know, more of a hot grill shape, that kind of thing. Very very much self defense oriented, um, hideaway knives, things that you can you can conceal easily. Um, and when they sent us some drawings at first, one of those fruit style knives was, was what they sent us. And we thought that was cool, but they, they threw this other one in there just kind of as like a maybe or like they, were, they hadn't even prototyped anything. They just threw the drawing in. And the more Leo and I were looking at it, the more we were like, let's try this one. It's weird, <laughs> but let's try it. Like, let's take a look at that. And so here's the prototype. It's uh, this one's 1095. It's pretty thin. I think we're eighth inch on the on the stock there. Yeah. It's a black G10 handle. Um, we've got some grooves cut out for, for grip. There's jipping in good places. Um, kind of a kind of an interesting blade shape. There's like a straight blade for the first inch or so, maybe a little less, and then curved to the tip. Um, mm -hmm. so very interesting blade. It'll be great for for slashing cuts, for stabbing. Um, you know. So I'll tell you what else I think it would be good for. So with because this edge is so much further forward and has a nice slice there, like this would be a good kitchen knife too, I would think. Yeah. So you're like slicing like mincing garlic or something. Yeah, I'll take so a Medusa yeah. for that. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that would be that would be unique in a restaurant, you know? Yeah. Busting that out for your steak. That would. It would work so well. Your hand's way above here. You're not getting juice on your fingers yeah. or anything. Keep yourself clean. Yeah. 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 So cool knife. It's uh, oh, yeah. we're we're uh, we definitely need to do some yeah, testing. We we got to get a prototype to the designers. This was finished up not long before we came to the show. Just so in time for the show. <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to send the guy one. He has like he hasn't even held his own design yet, which <laughs> I feel bad about. Sorry, man. We'll get yeah. we'll get one out to you soon. Um, but, uh, but yeah, very cool looking knife. I, this this one is one of my favorites on the on the table this year. Yeah, a truly unique design. I've never seen anything even kind of like that. Yeah, very much so. Mm -hmm. yep. I like it. All right, one of the uh, one of the one of the other ones that I like a lot. I'm, I've been into kitchen type knives, fillet knives in particular. This is kind of a cross between our first fillet knife and like our, say like our lioness or our Scandi Woodsman. Mm -hmm. So it's fillet knife esque, but a little bit shorter. And uh, eighth inch. I think we're gonna do this one out of, out of stainless. I'm pretty sure we're gonna do 154 cm on this. Okay. Um, the handle we prototyped for it is actually Blue G10, and then there's uh, kind of a mix of blue and Blue G10 with carbon fiber. That's fun. Yeah, yeah, it came out really nice. I, I, I'm, I'm liking that handle a lot. Give you a nice two-tone finish. And then a really secure grip, too. I was looking at how thin this blade stock is and then how this kind of comes up and then ends in the middle of the finger choil. But you managed to extend this little nubbin of G10 mm -hmm. just far enough out that you still could get a grip on that, but then have a very nice slim profile all the way up to your finger for cutting. A yeah. very tasteful design decision. I like that. I like this one too. So uh, that one, that one will be cool. I'm, I'm excited to see uh, how that one turns out. Um, we're not necessarily set on that handle, mm -hmm. but um, it's a it was a material that we got from one of our suppliers. They were like, hey, we're we're just prototyping this. What do you think? And we we're like, let's make something, take it to the show and see. And, okay. and I, I, it's been well received so far. I like it a lot. Um, got a lot of good comments on it too. So. This is a true prototype. We got a prototype design with a prototype material. Yes, yes. So yeah. it's cool. It's cool. We're excited about that one. I gotta say, I really appreciate that. Even though a lot of these are works in progress and are a little ways out, you do bring what you have going, so that we can kind of sort of get a sneak peek into the process over at Tops. Because I know there's a lot of R&D that goes into every single design. Yeah, yeah. And you'll see, you'll see stuff 
if you go back to the original prototypes and then see the launched version, you'll see little tweaks here, little tweaks there that just make things better overall. Mm -hmm. It's always cool. Right. Um, next one, this is the Abanico. Mm -hmm. This is not a new knife, this is an older model designed okay. by a guy named Bram Frank. Yeah, I was going to say, this looks like the Bram Frank thing because yep. he had his puzzle lock back in the day and you're supposed to be able to hook this on your pants or something. Yes. On his yes. folders. And so um, I believe he started with fix, with a fixed plate and the folders came later. Mm -hmm. um, I could be wrong on that, so don't quote me. But I believe that this was one of his first designs. Ontario made it for several years. And I believe for the last few years, there may be some custom versions here and there, but no, no production on it. So brand new mic. And they were, uh, you know, they were, they were, they were not necessarily like close friends, but they were definitely acquaintances. They every time they saw each other at shows, they they loved catching up with each other. And and uh, he's been he's been reaching out to us for a couple of years about bringing this back and bringing it back. And the more the more Leo looked at it, the more he was like, you know what? Yeah, I want, I want to do this. It's almost it's almost like bringing back a piece of history. And, and mm -hmm. it's, it's a cool design. It's a very well thought out um, knife for. Not really self-defense, I would almost say like self-offense. Like a uh, tactical. Yes. You're you're in the military, you are raiding a compound, you bring this one along. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can stab things and not lose the grip on this knife. You know? Yeah, I'd I'd like to see the fool who could ride up on that blade. That is yeah. probably the most effective guard I've ever seen on a knife. Yeah, there's a there's a a little thing that he added to this that, that almost nobody will catch unless they know. I didn't catch it, but when they, you see where the handle ends up, where your index finger is, right here. So the handle ends, and then there's an extra little bit before you hit the guard. Right there. That is apparently a subconscious thing, where if you're stabbing and you hit something, and your finger starts to slip, it'll slip a little bit and hit the guard, and that will, it's like an automatic trigger in your brain to clinch up again. Huh, so that way you have a little choil for that too. Yeah. When we were drying this out, I was like, that looks weird to me, we should take that out. And then I reached out to him and I was like, hey, what's this about? And he, he explained it to me and I was like, well, I'm dumb. You know, Did you try like, it? <laughs> yeah, I was, like, I was like, let's not take that out then. And so, uh, so yeah, it's been, uh, it, that, was, that was a pretty cool little, like a really tiny detail that he actually thought out and tested and, uh, and put there on purpose. So, yeah. pretty cool. It takes a master knife designer to come up with something that is not only ergonomic and regular use, but also ergonomic to your last impulses, your reflexes. Yeah, like, yeah. That's pretty smart. Cool. It was pretty cool. I was, I was impressed by that. Yeah, I'm impressed as well. It's a cool knife. Awesome. All right. The, uh, this one, I don't know about you, but this reminds me of just like an old school, buoy, old school, kind of outdoorsy kitchen camp kitchen kind of knife. Um, yeah. Bowies are not usually my style, mm -hmm. but I really like this one. The, yeah. uh, the Badger Creek. So plan on this is to do it out of probably N690CO. We want to do something that'll do really well in saltwater type environments, coastal areas, places where maybe you're not always maintaining your blade very often. N690's got probably one of the best mixes of very high stain resistance with a good edge retainer, you know, a good blade in the end. First of all, I love that hand. Yeah, I think we're gonna make a slight adjustment on the back end there. I, I, it's, it pushes most people's pinkies out a little bit. Um, but otherwise, I agree, the handle, the handle's great. With a very slight change to that, it's gonna be even better. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then a very long blade with a nice stout thickness. So I'm thinking if I have to process wood, it's gonna be just fine. An N690 is a way tough stainless. Yeah. High grind, so it'll still be slicey. But a lot of, a lot of. Uh, Leo did a really good job on this one. I, like I say, I'm not normally a bully guy, but I do like this one. Yeah, I'm thinking if I was going like on a polar bear hunt or something, you're probably gonna be near the ocean. You're probably gonna have some big cutting jobs to do. It's gonna be half hacking through woods, whatever to get there. But like, I think not too many knives are suited to an environment like that. Yeah. But this yeah. one, we have it. Yeah. Love it. Very cool. I, I, I dig this one a lot. Mm -hmm. All right, two left. We'll start with this one. This is a clearly a uh, karambit kukri. Yeah, it's um, the first time I've ever seen something like that. Yeah, the guy that designed this is uh, I, you could say a buddy of ours. He he runs a store 
in the Midwest somewhere. I don't remember where exactly right now on the top of my head. But he, he has a cigar store where he also sells knives. So it's like totally a man's man type yeah. of store. And, All he uh, needs is like a whiskey shelf. He probably does. He probably has that too. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's a cool little design. He sent this to us like, hey, you know, I've been thinking about making something like this for a long time, but I want to see what you guys think. And Leo, Leo was, was interested. So... Um, he brought that to us. Obviously, you've got the more functionality of a karambit, but then you still have the, the recurve and the, the <laughs> just the, the fun shape of a kubri on there. So, yeah. Cool blade. And I'm thinking, like, just for bushcrafty tasks, I know some people are nervous about losing their knife when shopping. Yep. If you just put your pinky through that hole, you get all the chopping force out of that nice broad blade up here for the, for the kubri. And you can... You can get a lot of work done with that. Yeah. It wouldn't be too bad at all. Yep. Cool knife. Cool knife. Yeah. That's really, really unique. Guys, there's a lot of just different stuff on the table. And I I don't know. We see a lot of three-inch drop points at Blade HQ. And I, uh -huh. I, I like a three-inch drop point as much as the next guy. But how yeah. often do you see a five-inch karambit kukri? Not too often. Not too often. Yeah, like, what I've... a breath of fresh air. Yeah. I don't think I've seen many of those. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, we, we I, I agree, three inch <laughs> drop point, great, all day, every day. But we, we also like unique stuff too. Mm -hmm. So last but not least. You've been mocking is, me, I've had my eye on this I one. Know, <laughs> I know, I know, this is one of my favorite ones this year. Um, this is kind of like a mini boning knife. It's, but at the same time, it's got that look of like, you know, this this could be a great self-defense knife, a great concealed carry knife. Um, thin, we did three uh, three thirty seconds, ten ninety five. Um, this one has uh, like a tan G ten handle with black G ten liners, mm -hmm. tungsten Cerakote finish. Um, we're we're still working out what finishes we want and how we want to do this, but it's a, it's just a great little knife. Leo. Um, Leo actually made two, so he made two of these at kind of at the end of the year. He gave one to me as a Christmas present and he's carrying the other one. And as soon as he started showing them to the guys in the shop, everybody was like, you have to make that like as a model. Mm -hmm. And he was just having, he was just trying to like de-stress and make a knife. Yeah. <laughs> and then after everybody saw it, everybody's like, no, no, like we gotta make it, we gotta make it. We were not planning to do this for SHOT Show. So Christmas till now, this got prototyped and, and brought to the show. So, yeah. yeah. I love it. Leo runs an awesome knife company. Yeah, he does. And I yeah. imagine that that's a lot of business management. In fact, we went to dinner with our CEO yesterday, and he's like, if you want to be a good CEO, man, you've got to learn that finance. And he's yeah. like, you know, I'm going to de-stress with what oh, I love, man. the knives. Yeah. And then he makes something like, man, what a... Yeah, you know, you got, you got <laughs> like, Leo, he... he he grew up in the industry making the knives. Like he's always been in the shop making the stuff, figuring out the problems, solving solving things with his hands. And so, you know, it running the running the thing for him, he's doing a really good job of it. And he, he definitely knows what he's doing. He's business savvy. He's he's uh you know, he's the kind of guy you don't want to cross. Yeah. Um, but he still prefers to make things. So any chance he can get to get out into the shop and make something, it's it's a it's a huge stress relief for him and a, and a huge kind of reset. Reminds him why he's doing this in the first place. Um, and he makes stuff like this. So you know, yeah, I it's, uh, it's good when he gets out there. I really like that because so my understanding is this is a design firm. Leo as well. Correct. So these came out of the same brain. Yeah. Yeah. Like, wow. And this one. And that one. And uh, El Chapo also. El Chapo. This guy also, you know, yeah. Guy's got some range. He does. He does. And, and every time every time he designs something, there's something that inspired. There's something that kicked off in his brain. And he's smart enough to have tablets and sketch pads and things all over. So he's got one in his office, he's got one on a drafting table, he's got one up in the conference room, he's got one in his custom shop, he has one in his nightstand at his, at his, in, in his home, and just whenever it strikes him, he's going to sit down and design something. Just get it out on Most paper. Most people <laughs> miss out on this kind of thing because they're not, they won't stop and do it then and there, and he will. He'll, he'll stop in the middle of a meeting and just start drawing something out. And so, you know, he, he it pays. It pays and he's really good at it, so. Yeah, well, yeah. I hope he stays good at it because I'm loving all the stuff coming out of Tops. He hasn't run out of designs yet, so <laughs> we'll see. 
Well, I'm looking forward to see what is in the future, and I'm looking forward to see all these in probably 2024. Likewise. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time, Craig. Absolutely. Appreciate it. This is a great lineup. So make sure that if you like any of these, check it out. We're going to have links in the description over to Blade HQ, and you can find all of our SHOT Show content on our YouTube channel. With that, we'll see you next time.